Okay, we'll pick it up uh, at the media availability with Tony Stewart, driver of the number 14 Office Depot Mobile One Chevrolet. Tony, two wins here at Martinsville. No, we haven't gone out on track yet, but what is your outlook for the uh, final short track of the season? I'm excited about it. We, uh, we're hoping we're going to get to do like the truck guys are here in a little bit and get on track, obviously. So, uh, you know, we're, we're running a little different package than what we're used to, so we're really anxious to get on track today. So, um, you know, hopefully this weather... Looks like there's a little bit of a cell coming through. Hopefully, if it hits, uh, they'll be able to get it dry in time for us to get on track. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions, raise your hand. State your name and, av- and affiliation. Kenny? Kenny Bruce, SingDaily.com. Tony, you guys, I mean, you run a different package a lot of times. Why is it, why, is, why are you concerned or hopeful that this change today will make such a difference? Well, we, we've struggled here the last two or three races, so we, we definitely needed to, to look outside the box of where we were at and try to come up with something different. We're actually, you know, relying on our teammate and kind of starting where Ryan typically does here. So, um, you know, it, Ryan's driving style and mine are different, so it's we're real anxious to get on track to find out what I'm going to need different than what Ryan likes, but start with his package in general and uh, hope that it's going to be uh, better. So it, it's quite a bit different than what we actually run so it's uh that's why it's so important for us to get on track today just to get an idea of what we're what we're working with and what we're going to have to do to adapt his setup to to the way i drive the car right yeah we're, we're using it for a starting point and then we'll have to you know every driver's driving style is different the way they brake, the way they get in the gas so we're going to have to make changes to accommodate what i like off of that setup Anyone else with Tony? Mike over here on the right. Mike Muller and MikeMuller.net. You were obviously very outspoken on the Talladega race. Daytona's coming up in just a couple of months, I guess, and I presume you're going to start building cars and everything. NASCAR's hopefully going to change the rules. You're going to hope they change the rules. They want to change the rules. What do you suggest they do, and what do you think they can do, and is there anything they can do? Well, I, I think they're a smarter group to ask than us. I mean, they've been doing this for 60-plus years, so, um, you know, I... Everybody's got an idea, but the the thing is, every time somebody's come up with an idea, there's a opposite reaction to how it affects something else. So it's it's a hard it's a hard balancing act, and it's something that NASCAR, uh, you know, I've got the faith in NASCAR that they're going to figure out what what's the right thing to do. But um, you know, it's it's a little bit tough situation to have to go through. Uh, it's it's starting to get way too political on the racetrack now, and and. That's not the way to. That's not the scenario you want to be in as a driver to try to decide a, a championship. Are they going to come to you as a driver? I don't know. You have to ask them them if they're going to come ask us. I, if I thought I had a great idea, I would go to them. I mean, I I think we're all in this together, and and everybody wants it to be better. So um, you know, it's not about whose idea is and who comes up with it. We just want the end result. So uh, you know, I. You know, I've got the faith that they're working on it hard and they're looking at everything that they can do. And, and you know, they've got a, a lot of pretty smart people that have been there for a long time that have figured out how to make it right. So, uh, you know, we'll, if we can come up with a great idea, I'd love to go to them with it. I just don't have that idea. I mean, there's, there's a lot more drivers in this garage area that are smarter than me that can probably figure it out before me. Hey, Jim? Jim Shaw Observer. Tony, you just said that it was a lot more political out there now. Is Do you think that's in due in large part to the two-car drafting? Is it become more apparent because there's only two people working yeah. with each other during the race? I definitely think so. I mean, when when you've got multi-car teams and then, you know, you, you, you saw a, a distinct uh, deal last weekend of manufacturers running with each other, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's becoming more apparent of, of what's going on it, you can you can talk to everybody you want to talk to and everybody's going to say no they're not doing this or yes they're doing this but you know, all you got to do is pause your tv with the field in there and look and see and it pretty much tells the story of what's going on so uh, you know it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how it's how it's evolving that way because of the two-car draft dustin dustin long landmark newspapers in relation to that, I mean, you've been in the sport a long enough time, and, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you first came in, you know, 99, 2000, that 
there was that kind of political football at these plate tracks, maybe not in this style, but manufacturers talking about this and that, and hey, this guy's got this, this guy's that. So in what ways or how is it different, or is it is it just kind of getting back to what it once was when you when you talk about that? Can you kind of I compare think when, and contrast? I think when I started, I mean, the, the political games were drive. you know, the teams when they went to their stricter plate tracks, didn't, they tried to not show their hand till race day, and then NASCAR got chassis dynos and things that, could they could pull after the race and pull those cars and figure out exactly what was going on so that that gave nascar a more accurate assessment of what the situation really was where this is something nascar really can't control once the cars go on the racetrack and what the drivers are doing and you know how they're pairing up and is it because of manufacturers or is, it, is it because of individual organizations so it, it's hard for nascar as a sanctioning body to to control that and have everybody just racing claire Larry Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Tony, it's kind of a wild idea, but if NASCAR wanted to stop the tandem draft, if they stopped allowing drivers to talk to each other, which creates this political conversation thing, would that would that solve it, or would that just create more trouble? I don't know that it would create more trouble necessarily, but you know, guys before they even got to the racetrack on Friday uh, knew who they were going to be running with. Uh, I would say probably ninety percent of the field knew who they were going to be drafting with once they got there. So. Um, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the answer. The answer is make it to where you can't push each other. And if you can physically somehow keep the cars from pushing each other like, like it used to be, then that, that eliminates the, the problem. You're not going to keep guys from running with whoever they want to run with on the racetrack. But if you, can, if you can keep the cars from actually making contact with each other and physically pushing each other, that's, that's the logical way to solve it. Go Hank, then Monty. Tony, we've had guys in here today talking about in the championship chase, some guys want to do everything strictly by the book and by the rules, and some guys say whatever you can get away with, um, they're cool with. Kind of where do you stand on that And um, you know, as a guy who's won two championships? Well, I think you, I think racing's always been about taking the rules that you're given and, and you know, pushing the envelope and pushing it to the limit, but don't, you know, in my opinion, don't go over it. Um, you know, and penalties, and NASCAR's done a good job of making sure the penalties reflect, reflect the crime. And, uh, you know, I think if you're willing to take the risk, I mean, if you're willing to put yourself and your team and your, your organization in that position and, and you get away with it, great. But if you're, I just don't see, I mean, I don't see it being, I don't see the risk and the reward being, being even. I mean, it, you give up an awful lot if you get caught trying to fudge something that's this much better and that, that can take you out of a chance to win a championship. I don't know. I, I actually just found out about it getting ready to watch truck practice start. At start. I saw it scrolling across the bottom and, uh, of the page and asked Daring about it, but um, I, I don't know. I'd like to hear it. It'd be an, an interesting uh, transmission to have heard. Money. Money doesn't guess in his it. Tony, when you're pitching partners, what I mean, are you more concerned about a guy who's really good in the draft, a guy who you can depend on, or is it just I mean, is it just a gut instinct? How do you pick who you want to race with? I think in the past we've you know, we ran with David Gillen a lot and I think a lot of that was, you know, Ryan's approach to how to run the the plate races versus what I like to do has been polar opposite. I mean, he likes to get to the front and try to stay at the front all day. I'm a guy that's always liked to, to get to the back, take care of it, uh, try to stay out of a bad situation at a point that really doesn't matter in the race, and then late in the race make that charge. And uh, I did the opposite this past weekend when I mean, we tried to stay up front as much as we could. But uh, that's why Ryan and I didn't work together. So in answering your question, looking for somebody to, to run with, uh, you look at who's really available. I mean, you knew the 400 cars are going to get together. You know the children's cars are going to get together. Uh, you try to find somebody that you think is available and then try to find somebody that has the same mindset that you have about how you want to run the race and then somebody that you feel comfortable with at the same time. So it's it's kind of a, I guess the first thing was find somebody that wants to to run the race the same way I do first and then, you know, out of that group, sorting out who you're comfortable with. If, uh, you know, at the end of the race, are you sort of getting where Tony's going, where like, somebody's going to be sitting 
Yeah, I mean, we we had Paul Menard offer to run with us when we were running with the 20 car, and, and the logic says, okay, well, you know, it's Joey's car's tore up, but we'd ran good with Joey, and it's like, you know, then if we do that, we're hanging Joey out, which Joey didn't deserve that. So Paul, when he asked me, I said, you know, I've kind of been running with a 20 car, and I'm comfortable where I'm at right now. He goes, okay, if anything changes, let me know. Fair enough. And same thing with Jeff later on. At that point, I was with the 27 car, and, and Jeff – came on the radio and asked and I said you know I've kind of been running with the 27 car here so it, to me it was more the loyalty at that point I mean uh, I've, obviously I mean I'd love to have ran with Jeff obviously because of our association with Hendrick but you know after you've run that long with somebody uh, during the day you hate to just dump them off with a two lap restart and and leave them by themselves and to pick somebody else up I mean I, there's maybe some guys that are willing to do that I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Okay, we have time for one more. Anyone else for Johnny? Mike Muller and again. Homestead, I'm looking at as being a Roush track with Matt and Carl probably having a slight edge. Do you look at that as sort of like you got to have enough points to figure that they're probably going to finish first, second, or top five, or do you figure Homestead is just as good for you? I think it's an equal opportunity. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like our mile and a half stuff's been pretty good this year, and we've gained on it a lot. I think so. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going back there, honestly. But um, you know, I, I guess I still look at it from the standpoint we got four weeks to to get it done, and you know, we just got to be we have to be spot on for four weeks. And, and uh, you know, even if we win the next four races, if they ran second, I think they could still probably win the thing mathematically so it's it's not really so much in our hands it's it takes the pressure off of us we can just go out and try to win the races and and it's more in their hands of having the pressure trying to figure out what to do and where to finish and all that but um you know they they have been very good there in the last couple of years and, and it's something you, you know going into it but uh, you know i've been to tracks where we were great the last time and then come back a year later and, and not be able to hit it at all so uh, you know anything can change all right last one over here Eddie Horman with BTW. Uh, Tony, you're obviously in the thick of this thing with this points, and pretty much everybody that's come through this media center, they really weren't sure uh, who's in second or who's in third or who's in fourth and how many points, but pretty much everybody that's walked through here wanted to know where you were. Everybody wanted to know where Tony was. How do you feel about that, and is, and is there anyone within the group that's left that mathematically has a chance to win that you're looking at every week with four four races to go. I I've said it from day one. I'm the only I'm only focused about one car out there right now, and that's the 14 car. Um, you know, obviously we, we want Ryan to do well, but Ryan, you know, we messed him up last week, and that hurt his chances. And and uh, but right now I'm I'm focused on my car and my car only. I I'm not spending the energy and the time worrying about everybody else. If if I got that much time, my car better be perfect. If I got that much time to concentrate on everybody else, so um, you know I think in the last 31 years of racing, I've always worried about what we're doing and and controlling the variables that we can control. But it's uh, it's nice to know they're they're asking about us and want to know where we're at. That's that's a pretty good compliment, I think. Last one for real this time, Johnny. You're just like a photographer. <laughs> One more. Hey, Tony. Johnny Buck with the Martinsville Bulletin. Uh, get you out of here on a lighthearted question. If you were going to a NASCAR-themed Halloween party, you could dress up as a current or former driver, team owner, etc. Who? What would your costume be and why? Uh, this may take a second. Um, I'm not going to go as one of the Bush brothers. Um, not because I don't like them, just because I'm not sure that, that it's a popular. Um, <laughs> I'd probably pick one of the beer sponsor drivers. <laughs> at least I'd at least I'd have something that would match my can. So <laughs> that's the, that's the only thing I could think of right offhand. I've never been to a Halloween party yet that we haven't enjoyed adult beverages during the evening. So I, at least it would match. That's the only thing I can think of. Thanks a lot, Tony. Appreciate it.